Hey, I'm Dagny, and in this video, I want to share with you my process and behind the scenes for creating and producing video content for my blog, DagnyZenovia.com, as well as for my business, BandoleyMuse.com. And I thought, let's have some fun with it and do it like a vlog style with the lo-fi, something music and the voiceover, because why not? Yes, so that's what we're gonna be, that's what we're doing. And then every now and then I might bring you back right here so we can talk some more. For today, in this clip, we are doing video photo content for my business bandoling muse. I'm doing more product photos that have a little more human touch to them because like you see somebody wearing them as opposed to seeing them floating in the galaxy like I have them on the website, yes? So these are the pieces. So if you hear some jiggling, while I'm talking, it's because they're on here. And yes, do you like my henna? I got it done a few days. Yes, a few days ago. Yes, trying, trying our best to keep them as long as possible. So video content for me is a full day process for me. So in the morning, I have to set the tone, yes? So we, I first play music and for today, my mood was one of those meditative, positivity, uplifting, soothing vibes. So I decided to listen to one of those meditation intention type videos that we have on YouTube that is music that's kind of looping, but has a certain frequency. Do you ever use one of those? Let me know in the comments if you use them. So today's one, I believe it was Something to do with like positive, positivity, uplifting thoughts, things like that. Then I light my incense. Once I have now set the tone with the music and the incense, it's time to do my yoga. I've been doing yoga in my living room for some, a while now. Initially, I was watching certain YouTubers who would do different sessions on their channel to gradually like build a repertoire of moves that I like. And so now I've come to the point where I do a flow, I do whatever flows with what my body needs that day. Next, it's time to eat. And this morning I decided to have some Hausa Coca. Now this is my first time having Hausa Coca that's store-bought. I found this at Palace Mall, the Palace grocery store, and I'm liking it actually. So kudos or cheers or bravo to the brand, which from the packaging, it's made in Ghana, from what I can gather. Because it's pretty cool. Usually or normally, I have cocoa from, from the roadside, from the street. But I like the idea of being able to make it myself uh, at home. What you see on my wrists that I am wearing are also Bandoline Muse products. We got gemstone crystals as well as some lovely bangles and the other beads that are on the left hand with the flower henna tattoo. Those beads are actually made out of palm nut and all of these, yes, you can find at bandolinemuse.com. Now, for those of you who have yet to try cocoa, it's, I describe it as a type of African porridge. So kind of think like cream of wheat but it's not as heavy and it does not have that grainy texture. And obviously it's a different color. I originally was introduced to House of Coco when I was working in an office when I first moved here. So shout out to my lovely coworker friend and we would get it from the roadside with bow fruit and it was a lovely bonding experience. Yes, for creating beautiful memories and Another side note, no, all three of the brands, the cocoa, the peanuts, and the cashews are all a made in Ghana brand. And I know the economy, as well as everything else, is very weird right now all over the world. And it is definitely very weird in Ghana. But one thing I have observed during this very weird time is there are, there's been an increase in made in Ghana products on the shelves in stores. Prior to that, there was a lot more imported products. And now I'm seeing imported products actually being substituted for the made in Ghana equivalent, which 
I think is actually awesome. Not only for those who make it, but also for our a local economy. Now that breakfast is done, it is time to officially get ready for the content. And because I am also the model, as in I'm going to be on camera, as well as doing everything else, I myself actually have to get ready. So that means we got to do the makeup and we got to do the hair and the wardrobe. So first we're going to do the makeup. And yes, I'm going to share that with you. So here are our choices of weapons. And in the blog post for this video, I will list and link the makeup products that I use. And definitely let me know in the comments if you would like any more makeup or skincare tips, tricks, content, etc. Let me know. Another fun fact, when I'm doing my makeup, I cannot see anything. Like I can tell there's a table and everything in front of me, but I actually can't. Everything is very blurry, all right? So if you are someone who wears glasses to see, then you totally understand the real effort it takes to do stuff like this. If you don't wear glasses to see, now you know why most of us who wear glasses to see are honorary members of the X-Men because we tend to have to do quite a variety of things utilizing our other senses instead of our eyes. In terms of the look we're going for, we're going for a we're going for a light makeup look. Not only to go with um, one to go with the jewelry and the vibe of the outfit, also because this is for camera and I'm staying inside, I'm not doing the heavier. I don't want to say heavier, but the other tricks or. I'm not doing as much powder and setting spray as I would do when I do a full face of makeup going outside to battle the heat that is here. Yes. In terms of the order of what or how I like to do my makeup, I start with the primer and then we go for the foundation. And yes, we spray setting spray on our weapons, our brushes and our sponge. Then the concealer. This is my first time actually using this Cover FX concealer and a little goes a long way. I have discovered that, yes. Especially when it comes to blending. I also now have recently rec recognized that the majority of my makeup collection now is minted cosmetics. I definitely do not plan for that to happen. I think that shows how really cool and amazing their products are. And I promise I am not endorsed by this company, but their products are good quality and legit. And I love the packaging because it's small. And for someone who's not wearing makeup like every single day, so I don't feel guilty of not using all of it before it expires because I end up using more of it because there's less of it in the packaging. And it's easy to travel with. In terms of learning how to do makeup, that was, for me, that was, let's share, side note, Dagny's journey with makeup. All right, so initially as a kid, I did wear makeup for recitals. I used to dance, ballet, tap, jazz, even did some folklorico and river dance once. And all of those required recitals that required us to wear makeup. So that was my initial like introduction or exposure to wearing makeup. I would say fast forward some years I'm in college, I'm not dancing. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll try and do makeup. And I kind of was back then just rocking like foundation and some eyeliner and maybe some eyeshadow and that was it. In terms of learning the layers and the contouring and all of that, that started for me in, I wanna say 2015, 2014, 2015. And that was when I revamped my I think that's when I revamped, again, did a revamp for my blog at dynasynovia.com and was fascinated with photography and doing like style blogging. And so I went on YouTube and Jackie Ina also was one of the bigger um, channels I would always go back to for tips and tricks and on makeup, on how to understand the angles of my face, what types of products to use and things like that. And that also helped me to then 
explore like what things to purchase when I go to Sephora and things like that. And kind of get away from only using makeup that you get at the grocery store, yeah? And then creating a routine that worked with me not being able to see what I'm doing. And then I've basically been practicing ever since. Yeah. Now that makeup is done, it's time to do the hair. And I'm feeling like keeping my hair all back for this look so it doesn't take away from the earrings that I'm gonna be wearing. So instead of doing a bun, we're gonna do one French braid. Is that what it's called? When the braid is like raised. So when it comes to having natural hair here in Accra, I think like any other part of the world, it's it takes a lot of commitment and discipline. I have found that I have to make extra effort to keep my hair moisturized here. Like it, it just, it gets more dry. My hair seems to get more dry here than it did in other cities I've lived in. So I've been having to experiment with different products to get what I like, plus also experiment with different types of daily hairstyles. I don't do like my signature coif as much anymore. I don't wear it like just out fluffy much anymore. It's usually braided down in like two corn rolls with a side parting type thing. I think I'm gonna pin up the braid part instead of leaving it down so it doesn't look like I have a tail. Next is time to set up for the video and photo shoot. This includes our tripod. This includes our backdrop. So this is the print that I created for Bandelay Muse. And I was doing samples here at first for creating my print for clothing. This particular sample, even though it looks lovely, I found that it actually works better as a backdrop than for clothing because the print itself is, is raised. So if you put it against your skin, it would be kind of itchy. And that's not cool. But for my backdrop is absolutely fabulous. And then what I'm hanging it on is actually a rack that you would put clothing on. Yes. And then I have this one light. Then if you remember this stool that was made by the same guy who made this, uh, my rattan bamboo chair, it is very useful for my photos and stuff so I don't have to sit on the floor. It's time for me to change. I decided I'm going to rock one of my Wear Ghana pieces. The brand is actually called Wear Ghana, W-E-A-R, for the dress I'm wearing. Again, I will link their shop in the blog post for this video. You should definitely check them out. They have in different colors. They got dresses, they got tops, they got pants, they got kimonos, they got gender neutral, they got stuff for women, got stuff for men, got stuff for the kids. It's a vibe, it's a vibe. And I really love the material actually. It's called, and they call it poly cotton, which is really cool because it gives it this like athleisure vibe to it because it's lightweight and stretchy and breathable, which is really nice. These earrings that I'm putting on are available at bandolinews.com. You should check them out. They're lightweight made out of gold, a fusion of gold and brass, and have a really lovely intricate design that is inspired by African print. Now in terms of jewelry, I'm focusing on the beads, uh, or I'm focusing on the gemstone and bead bracelets, but I wanted to style them with the bangles to give it, you know, get, give it that pop, give it that oomph. And I think, I think we found, I think we found the right mixture. I have now also decided I'm going to change my glasses because I feel there's so much color going on that the glasses should take a classic gold look as opposed to a classic bold look. Yes. Now it's time to take some test shots. I use a remote clicker thing with my camera and, oh, the camera I use for my photos and videos is the Canon M50, which I've been using now for, I wanna say now two years. And I've been really loving it. First, absolutely love that it's lightweight compared to my previous DSLR camera. And also really appreciate the quality that it provides. And that is a glimpse behind the scenes of my process in creating and producing video and photo content for my blog, diagnesinovia.com, and my business, 
bandolymuse.com. Once all of that is done, I then upload the photos and video to my laptop and that takes some time. And then edit. And I use Adobe. So I, I use, for the video, I use Adobe Premiere. And for the photos, I use Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop. And then, depending on how much I did, the editing can, I tend to do like, I'll do the video, like I produce the, take the photos and the videos in, a, in batches and then try to do the editing in batches and then try to be consistent with the posting because we did the batches of all those things, yes? So these videos that I did today were shorter clips because I am leaning in to experimenting and having fun with some shorter form videos, as in posting for Bandoling Muse, the business, posting on TikTok and Instagram. So that's been, I've been creating the videos, like I do it within, I upload them within the app on TikTok to then do the transitions and the, the captions and things like that. And it's been, and it's fun. It's fun. It's such a different, it's such a different like video producing experience, that particular part of it. Um, because some of it, at least with TikTok, you can be more, some of it you can be more candid. And that's what I'm trying to create a balance with the content of some of it is yes, like, oh, this was produced in my living room studio. And then others is like, I did it with my phone too, you know? It's also an interesting experience for me because initially when I was developing the business and doing and, and putting together like the Pinterest boards for what type of visuals I want and stuff, I initially was thinking that I would do more of cameo appearances in the visuals. Like similar to how, do you remember with like Marvel movies when Stan Lee, would always have a cameo appearance in every movie. And that was like the fun thing to, to pinpoint whenever he decided to like jump out. That's what I wanted. That's what I was initially thinking of doing, but then realized like maybe I can do that later when Bandele Muse is like a hundred years old, you know? So instead, to set the vibe, to set the tone and stuff like that. We are doing the modeling ourselves. But I also look forward to the films and collaborations for the visuals as well, because I got some I got some cool ideas that are coming down the pipeline. Yes. All of the jewelry products you saw in this video are currently available at bandolemuse.com. Calm. Definitely go check them out. I take my time, not only with creating the photos and everything for it, but also giving you the descriptions with each of these products so you know exactly what you are purchasing. And my new packaging came in, which I'm so excited about. Actually, I think I'll share about that. Would you like to hear more about the packaging? The jewelry packaging took about a year. No, okay, more like five months to get it the way I want. And I really love them now. So if you want to see some of it, go to either TikTok or Instagram because one of the little clips I got there, I show you the packaging. But if you'd like to hear the story about how we even got that done, let me know in the comments and I'll do another video for that too. And also please let me know. I know there's so many questions throughout this video, so I hope you wrote them down. Okay, because it's gonna be a quiz. No, but also let me know if this style of videos in terms of a somewhat of a vlog aspect or somewhat of a behind the scenes version. Let me know if you enjoy content like this. Should we do more of this? Should we never do this again? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Be safe. I'll see you next time.